Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Yes, you read that correctly. I finally spoke to my mother-in-law after four years of not talking to her or seeing her. And I don't really like to talk about this subject because it's a bit touchy and personal, but since I am anonymous on here and no one really knows me or my mother-in-law, I guess it's not really considered talking bad behind someone's back, hopefully. It's more so to kind of teach a lesson or I don't want to say teach a lesson but whatever I just want to share my story with you guys um so from the time I got married I don't think my mother-in-law really like liked me or accepted me because I'm from a different cultural background than she is and because she didn't choose me or pick me herself I think she didn't like that because she probably thought her whole life that she's raising her kids and when it's time for them to get married just like she's kind of you know been involved in every step of everything in their lives she thought that she was going to be given that i guess responsibility or the power to just choose a wife for her son and although there are some people who are okay with that where they just blindly marry whoever their mom or dad picks for them i guess my husband did not want to do that so um my mother-in-law did not like that and she did not have an issue making it clear to me that she didn't like me. I mean, she would act nice to my face sometimes. Um, but a lot of times her aggression would come out and she would actually yell at me. Um, she would boss me around all the time. We didn't live together either, but it was just crazy how she couldn't just be nice <laughs> the few times we saw each other. Um, and I was... I was a newlywed and I come from a very loving family so for me it was very hard to just get married and I moved across the country um, but I would come back to visit my parents and she also lives in the same state that my parents live in so when we would visit maybe I'll make that another video about like all the issues I went <laughs> through with her and stuff but basically she went back home um, to visit her family or for whatever reason and then she got into an accident there and she has internal um, bleeding and from what I heard she wasn't doing that well so I decided to call her even though I was still a little shaky like hmm, should I do it should I not if I call her now does this mean that she's gonna think everything went back to normal and she's just gonna continue to like try to control my life again or what but I told myself, like, you know, what if, God forbid, something happens to her and she passes away now? Or you never know what can happen. Um, I don't want to because I'm the type of person who will live with a guilty conscience. Even though I didn't do anything wrong, I don't think so. I would still feel bad about it because I'm just such a super nice person. So I decided to call her and I was kind of like shaky and my throat was dry and I was so scared. But I called her and I spoke to her and, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So I know I didn't go into all the details in this video of what we went through, what led to us not talking for years. If anyone's interested and wants to know, I can make another video on that. But it's just, you know, moms out there, when your kids are getting married, if they've proven themselves to you that they're responsible adults, that they know what they're doing, that they're on the right path in worldly matters and as well as their you know religious side everything is good just trust your kids i mean it's not like my husband didn't ask for her input when he was looking for a wife like he kept her involved but i think she was still mad that at the end of the day she didn't get to just choose a girl that she wanted and he didn't just go along with it so you know moms it's not fair to us girls when we get married that you're going to treat us in a bad way way just because you don't like our skin color or you don't like the fact that you didn't choose us it's not fair to us if I'm a good person if I'm loving you like my own mom if I'm respecting you if I'm showing you affection if I'm doing everything for you that I would do for my mom don't push me away just because of your personal prejudices like that's not fair to me that's not fair to anyone so you know, it got to the point where I was crying every day. I was crying all the time because I would call her. She wouldn't pick up my phone calls. Um, she would be mean to me. And I would be complaining with my to my husband. And it caused a lot of friction and tension in our marriage because I used to kind of punish him for what his mom was doing to me. 
and that's not his fault and I knew that but like I didn't know how to I couldn't stand up for myself I, I I didn't have the guts to just tell my mother-in-law like hey what you're doing is wrong stop talking to me like that stop treating me like that you know so for me I would just like suck it up and just deal with it when I was there in front of her I mean I even would cry in her house in the other room and stuff and her idea of fixing that issue would be she would come in and yell at me and still question me on things like why did you do this why didn't you come at this time why didn't you do that I don't even know what to say <laughs> like calling her the other day on Friday I was a little scared because I was like what if my life goes back to what it was and I don't want that you know how many years of my marriage I ruined and wasted crying over her and crying over like oh why doesn't she love me why doesn't she like me what can I do to make her happy like I don't know if there are any single girls or newly married girls out there who are watching this. Please don't waste your energy and your your emotions on someone who is not going to care about you, who is not going to care about how you feel or whether you're alive or dead. Like, I believe that the reason that I have a chronic disease now is because of all the torture I subjected myself to. Just throughout my whole life, people being mean to me, people mistreating me, people, you know, stomping all over my feelings. And I wasn't brave enough to put an end to it. I wasn't brave enough to tell them not to treat me like that. And instead, I would cry about it for days, weeks, months, years. It would always be in the back of my head. Like, even if I had a good time where I was like smiling, or I was happy, I'd be like, oh, but she doesn't like me oh like it would just pop up in the back of my head like oh well no matter what you do you're never going to be good enough you're never going to make this person happy and because of her treating me that way or whoever else like whether it was my grandma or my aunts from my dad's side I was always thinking that I wasn't good enough so that's also I mean that's also why I think I have imposter syndrome like I went through a rigorous program I took three licensing exams um within a span of four months two of them within one month and then the other national exam I took three months to study for and I thought that I was wasting time because it took me four months meanwhile there are other kids now who I see who are in the same program and now they've made it easier <laughs> I don't even want to get into that but basically now there are two licensing exams and also there's no exam when you're applying to the school there's no interview process and there's this one girl, it's going to be a year since she graduated and she only took one exam. There's another girl I know who's in a different field who has graduated for three years now and still hasn't gotten licensed. Um, and she only has to take one licensing exam. <sighs> Listen, like you shouldn't be judged based on how long it takes you to take an exam or to pass. But my whole point in all of this is that I put so much pressure on myself my whole life to succeed, to do well, to be the best in everything that I can be. And that includes my akhlaq and my um, treatment of other people. But then I always ended up thinking that I was, quote unquote, dumb or I was behind in life or that I wasn't good enough or that I didn't deserve to be in the position that I was in, even though I busted my behind to get to where I was at. And clearly nowadays there are girls who take their sweet time doing whatever. It's one thing if you're you have like certain life circumstances that prevent you from studying and getting it done or you tried your best and you're failing or something and it's another when you're just living in la la land and you don't want to do anything and you're just lazy so I don't mean to you know be one of those people who like puts myself up and puts others down but I'm saying now when I'm actually stepping out and looking at all of this I'm like okay I was actually a hard worker I was actually you know stressing myself out trying to get stuff done make something out of myself but then as soon as I would start working, I kept having imposter syndrome, thinking that I was not supposed to be in this position, that I didn't deserve to have this job, that I somehow faked my way through. And I traced that back to like my upbringing. And I'm not saying my mom and my dad, my parents were great parents. I'm talking about like the other people around me, like my grandma and my aunts and just being in a toxic environment and thinking that I'm not good enough, you know, and I still link that back to my mother-in-law as well. My mother-in-law, I'm not blaming her for like my imposter syndrome at work and stuff, but yes, her behavior and stuff, it did 
make things worse for me mentally because I kept thinking like, yeah, I really am not worth this person's love because no matter what I do, she doesn't like me. She's never going to like me. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe these other people are not the problem. I am the issue. That's why my grandma doesn't like me. My aunt doesn't like me. My mother-in-law doesn't like me. You know, and these things are not good. Like, dude, love your kids. Love your grandkids. Love your nieces and nephews. Love your daughter-in-law. Love your son-in-law, especially if they are respecting you and loving you and doing everything that they can for you. Don't push people away because once you push people past their breaking point, if they can't deal with it anymore, they'll do whatever it takes, even if that means that they have to stay away from me for four years until you have a, a crazy accident and might potentially be on your deathbed. So I think this is just more therapy for me to get it off my chest. I'm sorry that this video was not coherent and I'm all over the place and I'm just venting at this point, but maybe someone else can relate to this. Maybe someone else is going through something like this. I just want you to know that you're not alone and that the sooner you realize that your health is more important, your sanity is more important, your emotional, physical well-being is more important, the better off you'll be. Don't let anyone stomp on you. Don't let anyone make you feel inferior. And don't let anyone treat you like you are beneath them. Because no one is better than anyone except in piety. And only Allah knows who's better than others in piety even. It's, it doesn't go by your outward appearance and how you appear to be practicing or not practicing it's all up to Allah so please we need to work on our confidence we need to work on our self-esteem and we need to know that we are all human beings and we are not worse or beneath anyone else so don't let anyone make you feel that way hope you're all doing well talk to you soon assalamu alaikum